Well, last week continued the rally and it was a great week for stocks. I actually missed the previous week's uh, Market in Minutes report. <clears throat> Excuse me, I apologize, but my wife and I had our 20 year anniversary and we were down in the Florida Keys. So it was, it was a good time, but I was also very encouraged to see that the market uh, just went up and, and everything continued to do really well while I was out of town, which is usually not the case. Seems like every time you go out of town, everything goes to hell and, and this time it, it it did really well. So I, I was happy to see that. But uh, let's get into some of the uh, numbers behind it. And and by the way, the Dow hit 40,000 for the first time last week, which is fantastic psychologically. But let's kind of get into some of the numbers behind it all. Uh, let's look at the five day performance of all the indices. And of course, they continue to do well. I believe we're on about a four week rally now where things have ticked higher, which is a nice reversal from April because April was a, a really bad month. Uh, and May historically is not a great month, but, uh, you know, it's kind of bucking that trend uh, currently. So all the major indices up very nicely, as you can see here, that continues the trend we've been talking about. The year-to-day performance is fantastic across the board, especially on the broad market, S&P 500, Starting to see signs of life out of small cap now, which is fantastic. And the NASDAQ, of course, is just absolutely crushing it. Um, but this is really encouraging, almost 12% on the broad market. Shows a continuing expansion across industry. So it's not just tech doing well. There's some other things starting to uh, really do well as, as well. Uh, here we have our rates. Things have continued to come down a bit, which is good. Uh, you know, it, it, which is, you know, this whole up and down market has essentially been based on inflation and, and the Fed's movement and interest rates up or down. And so we've continued to see over the last couple of weeks, these rates tick down a bit, which is good. 30 year at 4.59, 10 year at 4.45 and the two year at 4.85. And the 30 year mortgage is sitting right at 7.47. So like to see that come down a little bit more for home buyers, but uh, at least it is moving in the right direction. So uh, we did hit Dow 40,000 last week, uh, ticked up a little bit above that on Friday, which is just really cool. Um, you know, it doesn't mean a whole lot other than psychologically, it's nice to, you know, breach that that milestone and, and hopefully we can continue that that progress. Uh, the week began quietly as market averages traded on a tight range. You know, everything was awaiting this fresh inflation news. And on Tuesday, markets rose steadily throughout the day after digesting a, a mixed to wholesale inflation report. Uh, the next day, cooler than expected CPI, the, the main headline index for inflation, uh, reported sparked uh, that that report sparked a broad base rally as the upbeat news raised uh, investors hopes for a rate cut. And the NASDAQ and S&P, which ended up above 5,300 for the first time, by the way, closed the day up 1.4% and 1.2% respectively. So meanwhile, the Bellwether 10-year Treasury fell to 4.35. So those rates were continuing to come down as we talked about. Uh, investors took a little bit of a break as the week ended, mostly yawned at kind of mixed economic data. But notably, the Dow did close above 40,000 on Friday, which was, again, really, really cool. Inflated expectations. So this is more economic data. With the two critical inflation upbeats last week, attention shifted to the Federal Reserve's next steps with interest rates. Top level CPI numbers known as headline inflation tend to be less important uh, than what's actually underneath, which is core inflation. We've talked about that a lot. So this is minus volatile food and energy prices. So, uh, you know, that's the Fed's kind of preferred gauge. So core CPI came in at 0.2 for April, just below the 0.3. And it was the first time the core CPI was lower than forecast in three months. So. Uh, good news there. The news revived speculation that the Fed might consider a rate adjustment as early as September. So that would be fantastic given the drop off in expectations we've had in rate cuts in the past few weeks. It seemed like maybe we weren't, weren't going to get any at all in 2024. And that has started to, to trend in the other direction, which is good news for the markets and borrowers and, and a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of different facets of the economy. Uh, so what's on deck this week? A lot of key economic data, 
ton of stuff going on here. Monday, we have Fed officials, Michael Barr, Raphael Bostic, Christopher Waller, and Philip Jefferson speak for the first time. So we listen in to that, see what they have to say. Tuesday, Fed officials, Michael Barr, Bostic speak again. The same people speak again. John Williams speaks for the first time uh, in the week. So we're going to be hearing from a lot more Fed officials than just Jerome Powell, which will be interesting because they all have their own opinions and, and you know how, they, how they're uh, viewing things. So it's not just about Powell. Uh, Wednesday, existing home sales, 20-year treasury bond, FOMC meeting minutes. That will be big, of course. Thursday, jobless claims, new home sales, and Fed balance sheet. And Friday, durable goods and consumer sentiments. Uh, companies reporting earnings, not a whole lot going on this week. Palo Alto on, on uh, today, Tuesday is Lowe's and Wednesday is NVIDIA. That will be a big one. NVIDIA's, NVIDIA's a market mover, so pay attention to that. TJX and Target, and Thursday we have Intuit. And that closes it out. Uh, folks, as usual, really appreciate you tuning in. And I will report back to you next week on what goes on this week. This is all of our contact information. Uh, should you need to get in a hold of us for any reason, we'd love to hear from you. And hit that subscribe button down below. We'd love to have you as a normal subscriber to our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, uh, go ahead and, and uh, subscribe. And we'll try to keep the uh, content coming. Not just this, but, but other videos as well. All right, guys. See you next week. Thanks.